Same. Yeah, no, I love your art. Um, I have never seen anything like it before, and it really brings me back to my childhood. You know, uh, I feel like Mexican parties are are singular, you know, and there is yeah. a sense of like urgency in your celebrations that I find really beautiful and something that I couldn't see as a child. And with your art, it's something that it really highlights, and I, I love that um, idea. There is a lot of um, intergenerational trauma that I feel like we often yeah. take those times, those moments mm -hmm. to really, I guess, to celebrate, to be in the moment, to be right. with family, to come together. The older I've gotten, the more I've gone back to those memories and you know realized how important they were in, in making my identity and ultimately now you know the work that i want to do i love how extravagant these pieces are and they just really take me back to that idea and that time um i also am intrigued by um the use of of icing i i love that idea of of pleasure and something that is so pleasurable that it sometimes it turns into disgust. Yeah. And, and there's a word that we have in Palagoso, right? Right, so, yeah. We, you know, celebrate our birthday. We have a cake, sing happy birthday, the three happy mm -hmm. birthdays, yeah. and then blow the candles, and then we get our face pushed into the cake. And I always thought it was so common and it Me wasn't too. yeah and i would ask my friends you know like my american friends yeah. and they were always like we don't do that and i always yeah, found no that else. so interesting <laughs> yeah like how violent it is mm -hmm. you know but this idea of like celebrating and then you know a little bit of like torture to be able to mm -hmm. celebrate and then i link that to you know growing up catholic and that same kind of mm -hmm. mentality of of celebration, but then also, um, you know, not being able to fully celebrate or the struggle to attain something pleasurable. You know, like getting your face smashed with a cake. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I too thought it, everyone did it, and yeah. it turns out no one else does. <laughs> yeah. And so, partly is that Mexicans really revel in absurdity. Yeah. Like there's a sensibility and a sense of humor that is very particular. Definitely. And I feel like your work celebrates that idea mm. of like, it's just so silly, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think oppressed people oftentimes, that's how they react to oppression is, is yeah. by laughing at everything. Because, 100%, yeah. Yeah, it's just so painful. So like, how do you cope? Um, for immigrants, for people of color, um, the fact that there's so much potential, so much creativity that isn't allowed to flourish because of the conditions that we live in. So my parents are both from a rancho that's in Jalisco. It's called San Jose mm -hmm. de los Marques and, you know, kind of like Los Ojos. Ah. Um, and they met there, they got married, and then they moved here to Chicago mm -hmm. in, in the 70s. Um, but they were always working in, in field work in yeah. Texas. Um, both of my great grandparents on both sides were braceros. And, and they, was, oh, yeah. nice, mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, all of this I found out later through sort of trying to investigate um, my family history because, you know, mm -hmm. it's often not talked about for many reasons. Right. Um, my parents also immigrated in the 70s uh, in the trunk of a car mm. rather than the, the hood. I yeah. was fascinated by that. I was like, oh, how did that even yeah, work? Right. Um, they were crammed in with like a bunch of other people in mm. the trunk. And uh, it sounded like a very traumatic experience. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's something that a lot of people don't talk about because, yeah. you know, like how do you tell your children like about the really horrible times in your life, you know? So... Um, sometimes it does take some investigating, you know, yeah. to, to figure out like who our ancestors were, who our parents were. Um, so I, I'd like to know about how you grapple with, with the guilt that comes with being like a child of immigrants and being able to like live a life that is so different 
from your parents and the fact that you're able to create art for a living I mean that is just so special and so growing up with my parents always telling me stories of what home was like mm -hmm. back then to them and yeah. You know, stories of growing up, yeah, in a completely different environment, mm -hmm. having less. I feel like all of that influenced me in wanting to make work about my family. It just mm -hmm. started off as that, as you know, I would take Polaroids that they had from the 70s and oh, wow. replicate them as drawings. That's and right. and so I feel like I was able to excel so high because mm -hmm. of that, because it was always implemented in me as a sort of gateway to be able to do whatever you want and not right. have to work, you know, a factory job, etc. There's still that, yeah, I think that guilt that comes with mm -hmm. constantly trying to succeed over work, like your own kind of labor, I think, you know, that gets translated from their immigrant labor to then you as being first generation and trying to make up for that. And it's like, I think often a slippery slope because I find that it doesn't equal to, um, I guess, redemption. I know, I grew up poor and, and I was like, I'm gonna be yeah. a poet, like, who the fuck does that? Right, like, yeah. Like, like <laughs> how in the world are you gonna make money? Yes. Um, but it was like the only thing I wanted to do. Same, yeah. And so like, did you have that moment where you're like, this is who I am and this is what I'm going to pursue? I got to high school and took all these classes that my siblings had taken, APR, and I had a teacher who really invested their time in me and you know mm -hmm. taught me about how to apply for college and how to have a good portfolio and you know even um, gave me like supplies for my first wow. year of college and That's I always amazing. yeah think back to mm -hmm. how important that was and he was also my two siblings teacher oh wow so there yeah. was kind of like a familiarity there mm -hmm. growing up yeah like who was it that really inspired you and who inspires you now? I would say Frida, yeah. Classic, yes. I don't want to say <laughs> I know. for the many reasons, sure. you know, now, but yeah. I would say her because, yeah, the, the, the way that she captured her life through mm -hmm. her paintings, you know, and all her portraits and being Mexican, I mean, it was kind of my only, yeah, the only artist that I knew that, you know, had a similar I guess lineage as me that right. I could see myself through um, and I still love her work I just hate the way that she's been commodified yeah so, I totally get it yeah. I, I often don't want to bring her up here yeah like, of course I love her yeah Who doesn't love her right <laughs> and I would also say Pepon Osorio it's a Puerto Rican artist oh, okay. installation artist oh, wow. who uh, creates these like amazing installations that recreate barber shops he talks mm. a lot about like masculinity, um, trauma to also very like decadent, um, excessive. Yeah. So yeah. I would say those two, um, yeah, I, you know, even through undergrad, high school, mm -hmm. seeing their work was really inspiring to me and continues to inspire me. There, there's not much diversity in the way that art is taught. Definitely. I remember, you know, being in college and uh, I was in art history and there's just like, I was bombarded with just Renaissance paintings, which right, I, yeah. I adore, but it's like, well, I would love to see, you know, paintings by people of color. Yeah. Um, for, for young people to see the possibilities. Exactly. So important. So, like, the fact that you're succeeding, like, you're going to inspire people who come after you. And, and I think that is so critical in order to change the way that this, this world works. It is um, not encouraged. Uh, um, for women to seek pleasure, to especially Definitely. Mexican women, like we're supposed to be sacrificing ourselves for our families, like right. martyrdom, and for right. you to s reject that is just, I think, really powerful to be like, I first, like, I deserve to be an artist and, and yeah. live the w way that I want to live, and and to create these pieces that really celebrate that that sort of indulgence, even though sometimes. It, it, th that indulgence could lead to like darker things, right. right? But but the fact that y you're able to um, really in engage with the senses and and there's something very sensual about the work too, mm -hmm. and so that's not something that we're encouraged to, to be or to do. 
I think I'm, I'm thankful that my parents were both supportive, you know, mm -hmm. that they were willing um, to accept the fact that I wanted to pursue art. Yeah. What can art do? And like, why do you, why do you dedicate your life to it? Yeah. I think it can tell a story. Mm -hmm. I think it, al it can also change a story. And I think that's really mm. why it's so important to me to be making work that I wanted to learn about, that I wanted to be able to see myself through, but mm. I couldn't. Um, and so I think about that through making the work too, that I'm able to add something to like this art historical canon that mm. doesn't maybe have so much space for women like me. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the, the loose festival like yeah how did you become involved in that and like why do you think it's important to have those kinds of exchanges mm -hmm. it's been really awesome to get to meet Sara Uribe mm -hmm. you know to have read her book and it really resonated with me um, you know the way she talks about a certain kind of trauma in Mexico but the kind of like thinking about the kind of implications of that and mm -hmm. then being Mexican-American here and you know like familial trauma and uh. how it's all kind of interconnected in a way and then thinking about another writing that she had sent a, more of like a, a memoir mm -hmm. um, it really brought up the sort of ideas that I was grappling with when I was making that video and I just thought it was amazing that her work was able to I guess inspire me to think about that video again and how we're talking about similar ideas about like the body and violence and yeah it was kind of like a perfect fit that's really exciting yeah i did uh the festival a few years ago mm -hmm. we went to mexico city um and it was just so amazing it was my first time in mexico city yeah. and it's such a like cultural hub and it's so important and mm -hmm. i'm mexican and i'm like i've never been here yeah uh, it didn't seem right that i hadn't been and so like the, the fact that they gave me that opportunity was just so awesome and, and to yeah. you know uh, talk to other writers who are, are, are Mexican and writers that I, I didn't even know and I feel yeah. like there's so much going on there that I am so unaware of and, and to be able to like get a little glimpse I thought was yeah. just really exciting and so the work comes from being Mexican-American but then showing the work in Mexico I'm yeah. very interested in what kind of like conversations will come up